How to be consequent. What role plays being consequent in raising bilingual or multilingual children? This is one of the hardest things to do for parents in general. In the beginning, it requires work, nerves, and lots of persistence. But why is it important? In this video, I'm going to talk about the significance of setting boundaries when raising children in multiple languages. Stay until the end to get three practical ideas that will help you stay focused and consistent. And a power tip to make your child not only smart with languages, but also with maths. Coming up next. Hello, dear Cosmopolitan friends, Andrea here. If you're interested in empowering yourself to raise your multilingual children with success, subscribe to this channel and join my mailing list to be on top of things. Check out the description below. The main reason why drawing lines and being consequent as parents is crucial for children is because it creates clarity for them. Through consequences, we draw clear lines that children use to get orientation. Orientation and clarity gives children a sense of security. Children that can freely develop themselves in between certain boundaries thrive. In between those limits, it's also where real successful language development happens. It's like being alone in a city that we don't know, for example. If we don't have a map, a phone, a guide, or a person to ask for direction, it's going to be pretty hard to find the train station. We're going to be walking around in circles, feeling lost, anxious, and at some point also frustrated, right? Well, with children, it's the same thing. Boundaries are their GPS, their maps, their rule of the game. As parents and teachers, we are responsible to provide them with that help. If we manage to do that, we are likely to have happy, relaxed, children that are cooperative and a joy to be with. The same thing goes for their language development. If we don't think about the why and how we want to expose our children to more than one language, and more importantly, set the rules, draw the lines, put the boundaries, then our children are going to feel a bit lost. Parents pull in one direction, children in another. They learn something, but not really effectively. Once we have a strategy in place for our multilingual family, check out my other videos if you want to know more about crafting a plan, then it's time to draw clear lines. Make it clear to us and to our children where the limits are. The clearer we set boundaries, the easier it will be for us to be consequent. Here are three practical ideas for you. First of all, reading books. Read books in various languages, if your level in those languages is high enough. But when you comment on the content, ask questions, talk about whatever else, always do it in your main language and your relationship language. This is an example of setting clear boundaries. Your children will understand very fast why it is that you are switching to an additional language. In this case, it's because the book you have in your hands is indeed written in another language. Once you talk freely, however, switch back to your strongest language, to your relationship language. So the switching is not staged, you see, but very natural and it makes sense. That's what makes it work. Tip number two, talking freely. Do you wish to talk freely to your child in additional languages because you are proficient in more than one? No problem. Also, in this case, we need to set clear rules. Use something visual to signalize the change to the other language. With my children, I use a hat and a pencil holder. Every time that visual aid is in sight, it means change of language, like in this video. Hola, mi amor. Hola, mami. ¿Qué estamos haciendo ahorita? La chile pif. Vamos a hacer la chile pif. ¿Y qué es la chile pif? Eso para pintar. Para pintar y también para escribir, ¿no es cierto? Uh -huh. Y para oír. ¿Y en qué idioma? Más alto, no te digo. En alemán. Ah, ya, muy bien. Pero, ¿sabes lo que falta? Falta el, el lápiz, el borrador. Uh -huh. Esto está todo aquí dentro. El lápiz y el borrador. 
Den werden wir uns jetzt gewählt. Okay. Und ab jetzt reden wir Deutsch. Ja, ja. ab jetzt wo haben wir die Radio und sie die, die, die zuerst mal mit das Hirn durch. Genau, das Radio ist da oben. Kannst du es holen? Ähm, es ist ein bisschen schwierig, zum das holen. Es geht, geht an. Es äh, fällt runter. Fällt also runter. zeig mal. So. Das, die CD ist da. Super. Da ist die CD. Das war eine andere CD. Das war eine andere, stimmt. Okay, wollen wir zuerst mal gucken, was du hier alles schon gemacht hast? Eine andere CD, das ist nicht für Zulöpfe. There you can see my daughter talking in Spanish with me until she puts the pencil holder on the table. That's when we switch to high German. Tip number three, correcting mistakes. Multilingual children code mix and code switch quite a bit. Mixing languages is not a mistake, but we parents have to help our kids improve in developing their languages. And so it is necessary to intervene when something is not said correctly or help them if they are missing vocabulary to express themselves. Here's one idea. When our children mix language within a sentence, for example, my milk is frio. Repeat or extend the sentence naturally without interrupting the conversation. We could say, for example, Oh, is it cold? Is your milk cold? I didn't know that you didn't want cold milk. Do you want me to heat it up for you? So in this example, I continue the conversation. I don't say it's wrong or what's the right word for frío. Doing that is just going to put your children off. And on time, what's worse, they might choose to better not say anything at all. That's not what we're looking for. So instead, what we can do is correct the mistake indirectly. In this example, I say cold instead of frío in the right context three times. Repetition is key. Often children repeat the sentence naturally using the correct word afterwards. And if not, don't worry. At least they heard the right word embedded in sentences repeatedly. Believe me, that's enough. If we adopt this mistake correcting approach and use it consequently over a long period of time, our children will learn two things. On the one hand, It's okay to use whatever words they have in their repertoire to communicate something to us, no matter in what language. And, on the other hand, they will know that we will provide them with the support needed to say it correctly next time. These boundaries give our children stability and that will lead to fast improvements. Now, of course, if you don't understand the languages your children are mixing, That creates more challenges. That's why, my friends, I strongly recommend that you start learning along with your children the languages that they are growing up with. In what other situations can we draw clear lines so that it's easier for our children to thrive and for us to be consequent? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And before I forget, here comes the power tip to make your child also smart in maths, not only in languages. On the 23rd of March of 2022, the World Maths Day will take place. That is the largest online math competition in the world. I'm organizing it for my school and for my own children. And the best part of it is that it's completely free and you can join as well. There is tons of high quality material for you to use. It's a wonderful, really a wonderful resource. By the way, Just in case you're wondering, I don't get any commissions for promoting this. I just think that it's a really wonderful project worth spreading to all cosmopolitan, multicultural, open-minded people like you. Please check out these other videos and subscribe to my mailing list to stay in touch with me. Keep on doing a great job and talk to you soon.